Hi again, all. Welcome back. I'm so glad you could join us again for what I hope does become a nightly tradition where we come together, we put on our favorite pajamas. I'm rocking some Princess Leia Star Wars tonight. You're going to see a lot of Star Wars from me. And we're going to share another story and maybe meet a special visitor. Last night when we met, we read one of my favorites, Good Night, Gorilla by Peggy Rathman. And I figured we'd kind of hold that tradition where we say good night together to a favorite special guest. Tonight we're going to read another one of my favorites called The Great K-Pop Tree by Lynn Cherry. Now it's a really great story but it's a rather long story. So what I wanted to do was read a few pages tonight and then when we tune in again we'll finish more pages until we're finished the book. Tonight when we start I want to show you something very special. At the front of the book is this wonderful map of the world. And one of the most important reasons I wanted to show you this is because last night I made a mistake. I told you that Sunday the Gothen cockatoo was from Australia. That's this country and continent right here. And though cockatoos are very much mostly from Australia, Sunday as a Goffin cockatoo might not be found in Australia. She may be found just across the ocean in these little islands here surrounding Indonesia. Hmm, that was really cool for me to learn and especially cool because I learned it from making a mistake. And that's something that I hold very important to me, making a mistake and learning from it. Now, on with the story. The Great K-Pop Tree by Lynn Sherry. Two men walked into the rainforest. Moments before, the forest had been alive with the sounds of squawking birds and howling monkeys. Now, all was quiet as the creatures watched the two men and wondered why they had come. The larger man stopped and pointed to a great K-Pop tree. Then he left. The smaller man took the axe he carried and he struck the trunk of the tree. Whack, whack, whack. The sounds of the blows rang through the forest. The wood of the tree was hard. Chop, chop, chop. The man wiped off the sweat that ran down his face and neck. Whack, chop, whack, chop. Soon the man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the great kapok tree. Before he knew it, the heat and hum of the forest had lulled him to sleep. A boa constrictor lived in the kapok tree. He slithered down its trunk to where the man was sleeping. He looked at the gash the ax had made in the tree. Then the huge snake <clears throat> slid very close to the man and hissed in his ear, Senor, this tree is a tree of miracles. It is my home where generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it down. Oh, look at that. This right here is one of my absolute favorite animals. A bee buzzed in the sleeping man's ear. Senor, my hive is in this kapok tree, and I fly from tree to tree and flower to flower, collecting pollen. In this way, I pollinate the trees and flowers throughout the rainforest. You see, all living things depend on one another. A troop of monkeys scampered down from the canopy of the kapok tree. They chattered to the sleeping man. Senor, we have seen the ways of man. You chop down one tree, then come back for another and another. The roots of these great trees will wither and die, and there will be nothing left to hold the earth in place. When the heavy rains came, the soil will be washed away, and the forests will become a desert. Thank you. 
A toucan, a macaw, and a cock of rock flew down from the canopy. Senor, squawked the toucan, you must not cut down this tree. We have flown over the rainforest and seen what happens once you begin to chop down the trees. Many people settle on the land. They set fires to clear the underbrush, and soon the forest disappears, where once there was life and beauty, only black and smoldering ruins remain. Look at those beautiful birds and their beautiful feathers. Let's do one more page tonight. A bright and small tree frog crawled along the edge of a leaf. In a squeaky voice, he pipped in the man's ear, Senor, a ruined rainforest means ruined lives, many ruined lives. You will leave many of us homeless if you chop down this great kapok tree. Hmm. I wonder what's gonna happen next to our great kapok tree and all of our wonderful animals. Now, there was an animal in here that particularly warms my heart. This right here, right under the boa constrictor and next to the sleeping man's ear. That there is our special visitor for the night. Let's see if I can get her up here. This, if she cooperates, she's not quite as still and cooperative as Sunday. This is Moana, the iguana. Now, I'm touching the iguana right now, and I'm noticing I don't see any feathers. Well, certainly don't see any wings. And the mouth here, while it's hard, doesn't quite remind me of a beak. So I'm thinking that this here is not a bird. What do you think? I, I don't think it's a bird. Now, what I do know is that this here, Moana, the iguana, is a very special kind of animal called a reptile, and even more, a lizard. So reptiles have some things that make them special too, and I figured we would do a little bit of that together tonight, and we're gonna continue that as well. So now, no feathers, but what I'm feeling here down Moana the Iguana spikes and all along her body are these cool scales. Sometimes bumpy, sometimes smooth, but always there to protect them. Scales all over a reptile's body. And there's something else that's pretty cool about these scales and about reptiles. Because their scales are so good at protecting them, they don't stretch very well. Now, my skin is kind of stretchy. Let's see if Moana will let me put him down. I have this like stretchy skin. Look at that, look at that stretchy skin. See it wiggle and jiggle? Now my skin, when I grow, it grows with me. I don't lose my skin. I don't have to get new skin. My clothes maybe, like my cool pajamas, if I get bigger and I grow out of them, I need to get new clothes. They don't fit anymore. Now, reptile scales are kind of like that. When reptiles eat and eat and eat and get bigger and bigger, their whole scales just don't fit anymore. So what they need to do is shed their skin. They shed their scales. Now, I did just give Moana a bath before she came to visit us tonight. So let's see, maybe there's a little scale. Oh, there's a teeny bit coming off. Let's see if there's any place that she's shedding. Maybe right here. I know, she's not a fan of it. See, there's a little itty bitty piece of scales that came off her. So she's shedding her skin. So reptiles have scales and reptiles shed their skin. Now there's one more thing we'll do together tonight and it's a challenging one. Are you all up for a challenge? Reptiles like Moana the Iguana in order to have a lot of energy to run and run and run and run and run and eat their food, they need to do something very special. They need to go where it's warm, like maybe under the sunlight or on a warm rock and lay around. And when they do that, their body gets really warm and gets a whole lot of energy so they can go and eat their food. And that has a really special name. It's sometimes called cold-blooded, cold-blooded. But there's an even better word that I like. 
way better than cold-blooded it way cooler than cold-blooded it's called ectothermic can you say that ectothermic that means that their warmth and energy comes from outside now our bodies are always warm inside so if you feel your body, it always feels kind of warm inside. If you're sick and have a temperature, oof, it's even warmer. But your body is warm whether you're inside or if you go outside and it's chilly. Sometimes when it's really cold and you go, you can see your warm breath come out into the cold air. We are not cold-blooded. We always stay the same. But a reptile needs to go where it's warm to get its body temperature warmer and have lots of energy and that's ectothermic. So I figure we're gonna end tonight with kind of a little bit of a song. I just kind of made it up so we're gonna see how it goes about the three things we learned about reptiles. And actually Moana's being really cooperative so I'm kind of really excited about this. So it goes like this. Reptiles have scales all around, all around. Reptiles shed their skin when they grow, when they grow. And reptiles are cold-blooded. They're ectothermic, ectothermic. What do you think? We'll probably sing it one more time and I'll probably get the tune a little bit wrong the second time because like I said, we're winging it here. Bird pun. What should we say about reptiles? We're, we're scaling it. <laughs> Let's say reptiles have scales. They have scales. Reptiles shed skin. They shed skin. And reptiles, they are cold blooded. They're ectothermic. They're ectothermic. What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? Also pretty nerdy. So reptiles are pretty cool. In fact, they're one of my absolute favorites because they have scales, they shed skin, and they're ectothermic. All right, y'all. I think it's it's time. I'm tired. I don't know about you. To say good night for the evening, Moana. We're going to say good night to everyone. Good night.